to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We pray that your word will lift us, we pray that you will bless us. Let the sick be healed tonight, O God. Let the oppressed be delivered. Change our understandings. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please greet one another. Be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Again, we apologize for the sound quality. Our technical department, um, they are doing their best to stabilize the sound. So please bear with us inside, outside. I'll be as clear as possible and I hope that um, we all pay attention. Jeremiah chapter 1. We'll continue on our teaching on the secrets of the kingdom. Tonight will be part 2. I welcome everyone. Um, those following us online, you're most welcome. You're part of us. Open your heart. There's no distance in the spirit. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'd like to start tonight. We have a lot to cover. Just to prepare our hearts before we go into our discussions. This was a vision that Jeremiah had with the Lord. Jeremiah 1 and we'll start reading from verse 4 we're reading down to 12 Jeremiah chapter 1 4 to 12 then the word of the Lord came unto me saying before I formed thee in the womb I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And then Jeremiah replies, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, saying, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. He said, Be not afraid of their face, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Now this is the verse of emphasis, 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And he said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Verse 10. See, I have this day. Listen, this is God revealing to a man the possibilities that can become of his life if he dares to believe God. How can God give such a prophetic word to a little child who just complained that his major problem was his inadequacy? God acted as if he did not know the boy was talking about the limitation that his age had created for him he said see listen i have said this day i have said uh, i have this day said thee over the nations over the kingdoms to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build and to plant that is the prophetic word this is what i want to do with your life this is how far I want to do business with you. Verse 11. Moreover, 
in continuation he says the word of the lord came unto me saying jeremiah this is what i want to do with your life but what is your perception he says what seest thou i have shown you what i see about your life but what do you see and then jeremiah said i see the rod of an almond tree then the next verse he says then said the lord unto me thou hast what well seen please give us any other version niv any other version he says thou hast well seen there's a version that says thou hast seen correctly i don't know exactly which of them but just just give us any other version that has a different rendition niv says you have seen what you have seen jeremiah this is your prophetic destiny regardless of your age and your background regardless of your limitations i have set you when he said this day not when you grow up in my mind this day i have set you over nations to root out pull down uproot build but then he says the only limitation to this prophecy coming to pass now is what you can see and then he says what seest thou he says i see the rod of an almond tree and then he says you have seen correctly on the strength of your correctness you have authorized me to watch to see that my word which you have seen and agreed with me must come to pass he says for i am watching to see that my word is fulfilled please give us amplified amplified says for i am alert and active watching over my word to perform right he says i am alert and active watching over my word hallelujah he starts by revealing to jeremiah his prophetic destiny in christ jeremiah begins to lament theologically speaking jeremiah is called the weeping prophet the nature and the character of the anointing upon his life was such that he was always raising a lamentation and that anointing altered his form to respond to the kind of message that he would communicate it was a reflection of the burden that was upon him so oftentimes you would hear him weeping as he communicated his thoughts from god so jeremiah as a little boy was being shown a great destiny who at that time never believed that it would come to pass and he began to complain the same complaint happened with moses in exodus chapter 3 don't turn there the bible says when god saw that he turned aside right to see the great side he said moses take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground are we together now after he showed moses everything moses started complaining and said but lord you know i'm a stammerer and then his unbelief grieved the heart of god and god spoke fiercely to him he said who created the mouth if i can show you i can turn your rod to a serpent if i can cause fire in a bush yet not burned what does it take to heal you of stammering he says because you have limited me i will use you to the degree you believe me but since the issue of speaking you did not believe me i will raise aaron to be a spokesman it was never god's intention for aaron to be moses spokesman he was supposed to be healthy and healed are we together his limitation affected the dimension to which god could find expression in him please pay attention to this you see every time god calls a man god does not just begin to use the man because he's called because oftentimes the vessel that god calls is either an unbeliever or having all kinds of thinkings and paradigms that are not consistent with god you see that happened to all the patriarchs abraham for a long time 
when God began to speak to him about his child coming, Abraham for a long time, listen, he tried to agree, but the reality of his supposed impotency and Sarah's barrenness to a point where Sarah laughed. She laughed when the angel spoke and said she would be the mother of nations. God could not do so much with Abraham until one time God told Abraham, come out. When he came out, he said, try to count the stars. Abraham tried and tried and tried and finally he couldn't count it. He says, so shall thy seed be. And then the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed God. He agreed with God. Oh, now I understand what you are trying to tell me. And then the Bible says, it was credited, reckoned unto him for righteousness. It is not just enough to know that God is mighty. Please listen. The dynamics of impact, the dynamics of doing great things for the kingdom does not just lie on the recognition that God is mighty. As great and mighty as God is, if that is the scope of your revelation about him, um, you will be blessed. It will impart reverence and awe, but you will not be able to do much. The idea of his revealing his might to you is so that it can get you to a point where you are convinced about anything he wants to do in and through your life. So that the revelation of his might will swallow away what you may hold to be limitations in your life. Here he meets Jeremiah and says, Jeremiah, I want to do business with you. And Jeremiah comes as a young boy says Lord I've heard about you doing great things with people and prophets now you are telling me I'm a prophet but I'm limited my background my ideologies are limiting me and God began to challenge his perception the series that we've been taking on the secrets of the kingdom are an attempt to reveal the working principles of the kingdom I call them secrets or mysteries. The very laws upon which impact in the kingdom is founded. Your ability to understand this thing and agree with God becomes your key to an enviable life of impact. Your inability to understand will limit God greatly in your life. So please pay attention. You see, it is the word of God that transforms. But I've shared it again and I'll keep drumming it until it becomes a persuasion. There is a system through which the word transforms people. The word does not transform people just by entering them and doing something magical. No, that's not how the word works. Write this word down, word, W-O-R-D is the Greek word logos and that word logos it does not just mean the speakings of a man right the the root word that is translated logos is the word thoughts please write it down thoughts like thinking thoughts is the word idea write it down is the word opinion opinion is the word paradigm paradigm and it is also the word mindset so when we say the word of God we are not just saying the things God is saying no we are saying the, the understandings that construct his mind are you following me now when we say the word of God transforms, that word, word is not just the speakings of God, like his communication from his mouth to you. It means his ideas. It means his ideology. It means God's opinion about everything. Let me tell you how we are changed. When your life consistently keeps realigning to God's own idea about everything, are we together? So you find out 
what God's perspective is about divine health and about the reality of you staying healthy and you compare that to your current state they tell you you have SS they tell you you have all kinds of sicknesses that destroy you but you find out his word is a compendium of his perspective about you and so he tells you by his stripes I am healed I have been healed if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead right dwells in your mortal body the Bible says that same spirit will revitalize now that's his opinion you can be aware of it and still remain sick or you can choose to subscribe to that new ideology and watch the Word of God come to pass in your life you see God is alert ensuring that all those who truly believe his word live with a testimony it may take a while brothers and sisters but as surely as you correctly believe God give him time there must be a performance in your life say amen I am amazed at how many believers think their lives will change just because they are born again I am more amazed at the preachers that teach Christians every week that all it takes to triumphant success in the kingdom is just to surrender your heart to the Lord and go to bed that looks very spiritual it is very evangelical but it's not the accurate presentation of God's thoughts as far as our success is concerned something in that equation is missing and this is why people get born again and they say I'm born again I'm a believer why are things not changing in my life everything I used to suffer before I am still suffering them after and I'll tell you why because you see you receive salvation through faith an act of God's grace but there is a partnership with you to activate the realities the Bible says that we draw out of the wells of salvation everybody say wells not just one salvation as a package is broken down into different systems of possibilities your finances your health your life the operation of the spirit in your life your spiritual growth it is now left for you through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to walk with the Word of God and change your mindset please hear me I am I am a firm believer that a believer who has refused renewal will experience the exact same thing with an unbeliever the only difference is the security of his eternal salvation but as far as the earth is concerned there will be no absolutely no difference as far as kingdom exploit is concerned are we together Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3 and he says rabbi we know that you are a man sent from God he said for no man can do these things except God be with him and then Jesus responds to Nicodemus in verse 3 of John 3 he says verily verily I say unto you he said except a man be born again he said he shall not he cannot see the kingdom he uses the word see the kingdom are we together verse 3 verse 4 Nicodemus responds and says, ah, how can a man now be born again when he is old? Will he enter a second time into his mother's womb? Then Jesus explains his concept. Verse 5, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and the spirit, then he switches terminologies. He says, he shall not enter. It's one thing to see the kingdom. But it's another thing to enter the experience of the kingdom. I call it prophetic realities and experiential manifestations. It is one thing to hold the prophetic word of God. 
it is another thing to enter the experience of it between thus saith the lord and it came to pass is a process that process is your degree of alignment please listen to what i'm teaching you this will hold the key out of every life of pain and shame and mediocrity hallelujah do you believe what i'm sharing with you today? I watch people very innocently, well-meaning people live under the expectations of God and they are not doing anything about it. Some are waiting for God to do something about it. So you hear people call and say, man of God, I don't know what is happening in my life. I serve the Lord, I go to church, but nothing is happening. And the biggest area largely is the area of finances. Nothing is changing. Is God so wicked? No, he's not. There are systems in the kingdom. Everybody says systems. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles. Listen. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping, maturing, perfecting, building up of the saints. So that the saints will not keep misunderstanding him. God wants to be understood. There is something about the thinking of God that men do not understand. And so he anointed certain people and said, explain to people that I'm not the reason why their lives are that way. There is an understanding they do not have. Listen, he anointed some. He didn't anoint them to be noisemakers. He didn't anoint them to be offering raisers. He didn't anoint them to just be jeep drivers. He anointed them for the maturing. If you are in the fivefold ministry and you are not contributing to demystifying the kingdom, you are wasting God's time on earth. The role of the fivefold ministry is to present the kingdom, make it clear, let the inhabitants, believers, understand. By the time they see the spiritual logic to God's system, they will now say, ah, I see. It's not that God is wicked. I never knew that there is a system like this. I never knew that godliness with contentment is great gain. I never knew that my not tithing is what is authorizing the devourer. I have prayed. I never knew that as powerful as prayer is, it's not the only key to opening doors in the kingdom. So the fivefold ministry, by grace it's not just about their spiritual life there is an anointing that comes upon them and gives them an advantage a superior working of the spirit in their life gives them uncommon understanding to the working knowledge of the kingdom to the end that they will now call believers and say guys i found it i think i've seen the reason why you are not anointed ah uh, it's not just about prayer and fasting your motif and then the person says really i i came from a background that is not so good and um i'm naturally inclined to wanting power and wanting a, a sense of self-worth and you say no i've studied the kingdom and i found out that once your motif is to glorify yourself you cannot have the anointing are you seeing now the fivefold ministry you have edified that person so he goes back in prayer scans his motif and say lord i change my my mindset i change my understanding it's no longer about being a celebrity it's about seeing your kingdom come at once he satisfies the condition for the power of god that same person will have a dramatic encounter and go for a meeting and suddenly begin to see the power of god because someone adjusted his mindset what you are receiving and what you receive every week it's not just impartations it's not just encounters but you are receiving realignments the answers to your questions are being dispensed are we together now to the end that you will now find out why certain things may not be working in your life now it's up to you to be malleable enough and say lord i am the porter I i'm the clay you are the porter mold me to whatever form you can argue and say no i don't agree with this and then continue suffering or you can say look i have i have found the truth and i will adjust 
I like, I like, um, what's his name? That short guy, the tax collector. Zacchaeus. When he climbed the tree, he was a wicked man. He defrauded people because of his office as a tax collector. But his motive was sincere. Now he climbed the tree. I know why he was a wicked man because of his size. He probably felt that they were looking down on him. And so he had to amass wealth to cover for something. So the issue was not finances. The issue was trying to cover for inferiority. Are we together? And he climbed the tree to see Jesus. And Jesus said, don't climb. It's your house I'm going to. Jesus meets the man. And at once he corrects Zacchaeus' mentality. He says, I didn't come to your house because you are rich. I didn't come to your house because you are tall. In other words, it's not about those things. It's about my love and my grace. You did not qualify, but I came to your house. And Zacchaeus said, that means there's no need defrauding people. At once, he changed his mindset. Are we together now? He started returning everything and said, ah, my amassing money was not because I like money. I was hoping that through it, I will look like royalty so that every celebrity will visit my house. Now Jesus has abused my mentality. And he says, there's no need for that old thinking. We must be like Zacchaeus tonight. Opening up our hearts. And the moment the word of God comes, you don't argue with it. You see, only foolish people argue with the word of God. Especially when you are not getting results in your life. We live in a generation where people are confident to talk about things they know nothing about. Are we together? Someone who doesn't play football, you see him arguing for three hours. He says, I know how much, how we paid them this amount, meaning his team. And he never contributed anything. And he never wonders and says, come, why is my life not working like the person I'm talking about? People argue all around. Why should doctors go on strike? And the person is not even, a, he's not near medicine. He doesn't know anything. We like talking boldly about things we know nothing about. And that's the danger. We keep venting our ignorance. But when we come to God, he requires that we become silent. That's what Mary did. Martha was busy about commanding and talking. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. You are trying to get things done, but one thing is needful. And this Mary has chosen to do what? To sit at the feet. There's something about being still in God's presence. When he was about to feed the 5,000, he said, let them sit down. If you can't sit down, there's no bread for you. Sitting down is a sign of stability. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Oh, but Joshua Selma, you, I have bills to pay tomorrow. Sit down in green pastures. Your running around is not the solution. Let me tell you something. When we go through things, we think God is disturbed the way we are disturbed. And we say, God, keep responding on the go. And God says, I'm not going to talk to you. Prove you trust me by sitting down. In five minutes, that sickness. You are trying to rush and call a doctor outside. And God is saying, just sit down. I can address this issue. You can't even raise 3.5 million to go to India. So why don't you sit down and give me time and walk out of this meeting here? I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I respect the word of God. I will never argue with his perspectives. I'm not too proud to admit I am wrong. No, 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 no. no. Once the word of God challenges my ideologies, I say, Lord, I agree with you. You cannot be wrong. So I'm the one who is wrong here. Anyone who has that kind of spirit is on his way to an enviable destiny. Do you know how long it takes the average believer to adjust to the word of God? Until we exhaust all our options and we are convinced that there is no other way. Then we say, okay, Lord, what were you even saying? And God says, I've been talking for five years. When will you listen to me? Okay, Lord, I admit I'm 35 now. There's no husband. Oh yeah, let me hear what you have to say. And God is saying, sit down. It's not by hopping up and down. There is a secret. You settle down for six months and enter your marital life. You would have entered it five years ago if you paid attention. The day you listen to God, that becomes your this day. Your this day can be any day. He says, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. He said, today, if you will hear his voice. Let me tell you something. Time 
never changes anything time only reveals the day you align to the word of god that's the day your change starts pray in one minute and say lord you're about to speak to me i'm not rebellious my heart is open go ahead and pray inside and outside the online community open your heart and let's pray shiba kato sabah Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. Sing it one more time. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light Unto my Hallelujah. Aside from my personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the privilege that God has given me to understand and know the person of the Holy Spirit, the next, I would say, biggest gift that God has given me is an understanding of the systems of the kingdom an understanding of the operation of the kingdom how the kingdom works the grace for performance that is on the strength of knowledge not just jacking yourself and say it will happen and mocking yourself understanding that produces consistent results and there are so many of them we've shared a lot of them in this house but in this series I took six of them six irrefutable laws of the kingdom that when you walk with please hear me when you walk and live by these truths when you allow the word of God to superimpose your thinking and it becomes your conviction and you are diligent to act I promise you there will be a performance hallelujah Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says and it shall come to pass in that day that if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day not choose the ones you like to do and observe keep live by all these laws that I give unto you right it says that you shall be exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come to you and overtake you. Then he begins to tell you, you will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the country and all of that, all those blessings. But they are tied to your obedience. They are tied to faith. They are tied to your response, which is a product of your conviction. When you don't believe a thing, you cannot live by it. You cannot act upon it. And so we took some laws. The first was the law of encounter. And we spoke about complete surrender. That was the first discussion. That complete surrender is the law that governs the manifestation of the hand of God upon a man. That every time you see a man, a woman, a man of God, walking in unusual strange dimensions of graces the issue is not criticizing them the issue is not joining all those band of noisemakers calling everybody around town fake there are people who have this understanding the moment they see things they do not understand they see certain superior levels of graces they begin to criticize it once it is outside of their frame of belief how can a woman 35 years barren be pregnant 
you see that and they come up with you would you would think such a great testimony like this will be received by everybody until you discuss it among critics you say where is the woman bring her let's see her and the baby and let's have a doctor certified that it was 35 years as if the man forgot when he married his wife you see how people think so every time people see unusual levels of grace they usually will try to find explanations to discredit that is not as powerful as that but the key is complete surrender never forget this forget about great levels of the anointing when you are still conscious of yourself your reputation your anointing your sermon the quality of your revelations you will never touch the anointing that way are we together god will only truly anoint men who become reflectors men who have paid the price to be his image bearers they are reflectors of him not themselves a man of God who wants power to build a ministry and prove to people he's anointed will keep sweeping empty grounds and, 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 and keep preaching to empty pews for the rest of his life. Because God is not interested in men making a name for themselves. The name they make is his reward by uh, his reward for them being reflectors of him. Hallelujah. I have seen a lot of preachers come to me and every time they come their first question is what is the secret to the anointing and they think it's just some magic formula i'll say this and that and that eat bitter leaf for one week add cabbage after that pray just put cross on your head for three days and get into power that's charm that's that's not the way it works it's not a charm you put in your pocket and then you just hide it in your suit no those who use that know what they are doing but those who you see true power in the kingdom is a product of relationship it's a product of relationship you cannot receive from a god you do not know you can receive from a herbalist you do not know you can receive from a native doctor you do not know you don't even have to know them but if you want to receive from god the first assignment is not your hand it's your heart my son give me your heart so we discuss that complete surrender as the key to unusual grace. Number two was the revelation that realities are only our physical reality is a reflection of a reality greater. Listen to this. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, his mind, so he is. I told you this law. It is the law that births realities in our world. That your physical life is only a looking glass are we together the quality of your life spiritually and otherwise is a reflection of something happening inside your life is not authorized to change until your mind changes anything that is not a reality in your mind cannot be a reality in your life genesis 11 god came and saw nimrod the son of Cush, mobilized certain people and said go to come let us build a city who stop will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the bible says they burnt mortar and slime and bricks and started building and then the bible says god came to look down and see the building which the son of man had built god said as far as he was concerned they had finished the building because they had conceived it as a possibility right here your life will never change until your mind changes let me tell you the danger of trying to change things physically without changing it in your mind. If one million naira enters your hand and there is a poverty mentality in you, that mentality will adjust your behavior to force that money to leave you. And until it leaves you and you become poor, then your mind will interpret it as you being normal. Your mind will interpret wealth as being abnormal because it's not consistent with your beliefs. Are we together? So you must make sure that transformation happens first within. You don't change people by just trying to change their physical environment. I gave an illustration one time when I was speaking about transformation. Have you dashed somebody a shirt or a trouser that you used for three years? It's still looking brand new because your mindset made you care for it. You always ironed it. You dashed the person the clothes and in two weeks, 
a shirt that was white has become brown the person's mind is showing on the shirt are we together now yes you give that person a shirt ordinarily you wear it for two days and wash it or one day and wash it but this guy has worn it for two weeks why because in his mindset he says it is not necessary neatness is unnecessary it's only um, an emergency and once i am not sick there is no reason why i should be neat that's what his mindset is telling him so he wears the shirt for two weeks until everything tears and then he throws it away if the shirt has love written on it you see that the o has faded or disappeared two weeks it's the same thing that will happen to a corporation when you take the security man and make him the md and make the md a security man you know most people see wealthy people for instance and say how can we be walking we are the ones sweeping opening gate there is a wicked man sitting under ac just signing papers and his salary is 10 million and we are here receiving 15,000. no it's not the suit it's not the ac it's the mindset if you want to know switch them take the security man and keep him on that seat let me tell you what he will do we've discussed it right he will steal stabilizers he would drink what is in the fridge because his mindset does not teach him that he has capacity to reproduce it careful hallelujah that's all right let me have your attention please. so with that kind of thinking look up please with that kind of thinking and that kind of faulty understanding what happens to the person you know, so it has to be in your life as it is in your mind people try to change their physical environment we use all kinds of things to change our mindsets so somebody can wear a suit and feel like a ceo but there's there's nothing ceo there you see so there's nothing to deliver you can carry complimentary cards and move around and they say who are you, you say my name is this and that i am the ceo what is your value i don't understand what you're saying because for you to be a ceo there's something you should have gotten you ignored it and thought it was all suits how we fool ourselves we hate adjusting our minds but we love trying to fake it in the physical and nigerians can fake things we can fake wealth you can fake as you people act as if they eat fried chicken and, and this every time whereas in their mindset they are living in abject poverty and they will not make adjustment and sometimes pastors in a bit to encourage people this is what we tell people act like your future and what what i understand what we mean we mean change your mindset but someone now says okay i'm hearing act like your future and hot son the person wears suit and tie and is moving say i am a ceo he carries a bag and he thinks i'm acting like my future and he mocks himself for 10 years whereas the first way to act like your future is to think like your future you must think like your future to become like the future so the issue is not going to borrow money and now start buying shoes of 10,000 and 15,000 when you cannot afford food of 200 naira the idea is not to create a fake outer environment the idea is to begin to give your mindset new informations and inevitably trust me trust me people i know what i'm telling you inevitably your physical environment will become a reflection of your mindset our physical environment is only a mirror have you seen someone stand before a mirror assuming i stand before a mirror and maybe there's something um on my head or on my shoulder and i'm trying to remove it will i put my hand inside the mirror to change it i adjust it here and the man in the mirror adjusts the man in the mirror is this physical you the real you is the person within if that adjustment does not happen forget about trying to create change that's why people create temporal changes and then their mindset superimpose it are we together so i try to act as if i'm a christian i'm not serious about god and i'm not serious about the world but simply because i want to enter a relationship with a lady who comes for koinonia and she has told me if i don't come for koinonia no relationship i come and i fake it are we together while they are singing i watch people raise their hands 
I'm not raising it out of conviction. I don't even know what is happening. And after five minutes, I say, my dear, I'm leaving this place because my reality tells me you are supposed to be drinking by eight o'clock. You don't worship God by eight o'clock. And you have programmed your mind to always drink by evening. While worship is going, you are just remembering that somebody can buy it free. I don't have money, but somebody will buy the beer free. But you are in church just by force. It's the same thing pastors try to do to people. Be nice. Don't be bad. Why are you a bad girl? Change. If she could change, she would not be that way. There is an understanding. The key is not to tell people to change. The key is to show them how to change. Hallelujah. As it is within you, so will it be in your life. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, it says, for out of it are the issues of life guard your heart don't allow any kind of thing enter your mind let me tell you why many of us are confused we are confused because the informations we allow into our spirits are not constructive you finish listening to a worship song right now two hours of strong worship are we together the moment you finish you have the selection you have gospel songs you have uh all, all the others, you know, songs like that, well selected. So when you want to feel spiritual, you finish listening to the gospel songs and then you announce a kite, enough of church, I beg. Let me just hype myself and enjoy. And now you put another thing. You are, you are diluting what you spend time. You finish listening to the word of God and all of a sudden you just put a pornographic movie and you are watching and you are happy and you are laughing. At the end of it, you prayed for two hours, but right now, you don't even know what your mind is thinking again. You, 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 the goal was for your mind to think creatively, but all through your mind is thinking about something you are trying to fight because you are feeding it. Are we together? You are feeding it. You go and sit down in the midst of people who are always gossiping. You sit from 10 o'clock till 2, talking about people, tearing down people. And afterwards, you go back and you are surprised that that is your entire thinking. You have to protect your heart. Build a wall around your heart. Don't allow just anything find expression. No. No. There are things I will never be found associating with. Not be, I don't care whether they are good or bad, honestly. I am on a project. I am well aware of how much my life would have changed if I were more renewed than I am now. And I'm on a consistent project to renewing myself. I'm not ready to sabotage that effort through carelessness. Are we together now? Please be careful what you allow in your mind. You allow people keep talking to you. You sit down and talk about somebody who became a millionaire in four months. And say, four months? Millionaire? There are thieves in Nigeria. I saw one. He's my neighbor. Let me, I'm just waiting for that guy. And you sit down. Let me tell you what you are doing. You are associating wealth with negativism. Your mind cannot agree that you will be blessed because you have already castigated somebody and you have put a benchmark on yourself to never be wealthy. So somebody becomes a millionaire in four months. Instead of you to find out what kingdom principle did he, did he practice? What sacrifice? What happened? No, we don't argue. We say, no way. It took me 20 years. Your father will tell you or your mother will tell you to buy my first golf. How can a young man become a millionaire in one month? 20 years, one, uh, four months. It took you 20 years because of what your knowledge could deliver. That's how long it took you to be in the labor room. 20 years. Are we together? There are different ways to get to Lagos. You can trek. You can ride a bike. Are we together? You can follow a luxurious bus. You can have your private car. You can fly. You can take a private charter. You can have your own jet. You will arrive in different conditions. Don't, don't ever make a mistake that you will arrive with the same condition. No. That guy who trekked from when Buhari won, that gentleman, they, they appreciated him, but have, did you see the guy? Yes. That's how life is with many people. We use all kinds of formulas 
that we think will take us to the place of destiny. And when we find people applying superior kingdom principles, rather than finding out, we argue and we say, no, this is the only way I know. That means that's the only way there is. Tell somebody there is another way. Hallelujah. Say there is another way. Please give us 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the last verse. 1 Corinthians 12, the last verse. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is changing us. 1 Corinthians 12, the last verse, please. Everybody read. It says, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Uh-huh, read on. And yet, I show unto you a more excellent way. Say there is a more excellent way. The fact that you are doing it the way you know to do, brothers and sisters, hear me, does not mean that is the only way. You can do ministry the way you were taught in the seminary, in Bible school, but that does not mean that is the ultimate way. There is a more excellent way. Are we together? You can manage your family the way you know. You can try to know God the way you have been taught, but there is a more excellent way. And that's the way that the Lord is teaching us. That it is not all up to God and it is not all up to you. It will always take partnership because the kingdom of God is made of systems and every system defines the operation of God in a particular way. There is the administrative and governmental system of the kingdom. There is the economic system of the kingdom. Are we together now? There is the family system of the kingdom. The area I was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday and fortunately we are, we are studying the course ministry. And while I was teaching them, I taught them something. I told them, I said, when the devil comes to your life, he finds out which operation of the system you do not understand. That becomes his entrance point in your life. So if Satan comes to your life and finds out that you are a prayerful person, he will not start his attack that way. He finds out that you don't have a problem fasting and praying and studying the word. You have already understood the relevance. Yet, you are not an excellent person. He uses your lapse of lack of excellence as the access point to your life. Are we together now? Jesus said this, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. Satan tried to access the life of Jesus through different systems. At first, he tried to terminate him at birth. It didn't happen. He refrained himself. Waited for Jesus when he was tired. He now came trying to use hunger. Turn these stones into bread. It didn't work. He tried to use pride and ego. Are you not the son of God? He shall put his angels charge over you. Even try to use spirituality. Jesus defeated him. And the Bible says he left him for a season. Watch this. He now tried to come through Peter. Are we together? To prohibit Jesus from talking about his death and resurrection. Jesus detected it and rebuked him. Finally, he came through Judas. And he was allowed. So that scriptures will be fulfilled. Not because Jesus did not know. The Bible says... After they took the communion, Satan entered Judas and he went and caused, made the arrangement for them to kill Jesus Christ. The systems of the kingdom. The area you do not know is the area the devil will defeat you in. And so I'm opening us up to the multifaceted dimensions of the systems of the kingdom to the end that we will be fortified. Not just spiritually, not just financially. Not just maritally, there will be complete and balanced growth. Number three, I shared with us last week on how to receive direction and divine strategies. There is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for helping men surmount mountains in their lives. And it's found in Proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 7. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The next verse says, In all your ways, acknowledge him. And there's a promise tied to it. It said, If you acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. Right? Then you read verse 7. It says, Be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord 
and turn away from evil. But the verse of emphasis is verse 6. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and she shall direct your path. That every time you are confused in your life, which is normal for men, we are human beings, we do not have all the knowledge. There are times you will be faced with mountains that are bigger than you. Listen to me, please. There are times you will be faced with all kinds of mountains, financial mountains, marital mountains, educational mountains, career mountains, spiritual mountains, health mountains. There are all kinds of mountains before you. And Jesus is teaching us how to surmount those mountains. He says, every time you get to a point where you are in a crossroad, you are confused, you don't know what to do. He says, forget about the object of your worry and begin to acknowledge him. Flaunt his majesty, remind him of the things he has done before. And he's authorized to create a pathway. Number four. The law of mastery and competence. This is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for producing greatness and rewards. The kingdom operates on a reward system. This is one of the fundamental laws of wealth, one of the fundamental laws of relevance, one of the fundamental laws of influence, one of the fundamental laws of greatness, the law of competence. Proverbs 18, 16, it says the gift of a man I told you to write many things as similes of that word gift the value of a man the contributions of a man are we together the abilities of a man when well refined developed and deployed will make room for him will make room for him regardless of your background koinonia regardless of what you know and what you do not know when you find your giftings the abilities that God deposited in you and you pay the price to refine them, they will bring you all kinds of rewards. Tangible rewards. What are tangible rewards? Money and all the physical privileges that come. And intangible rewards. The sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that comes knowing that you are revealing the glory of God and that you are using your gifts to serve humanity. It brings fulfillment. But it happens only at the mercy of competence. I'm building tonight right here. When a man finds his God-given ability, Koinonia, please listen to me. I plead with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention. When a man finds his God-given ability, he has found his way out of mediocrity. He has found his way out of failure. He has found his way out of pain and tears. But your gift in itself, although it came from God, it always comes as a seed. It always comes unrefined. Listen to me. It will take that gift passing through a process of refining of development are we together now and of of mastery in dispensing it to be paid for and to be received and rewarded for nobody is going to bless you just because you think you have been having dreams that god is calling you to be a chef or to be a caterer have you mastered the cooking to an extent that a governor can call you or call your catering company this is the area I have problems with men of God. Because we never challenge people to be at their best. They just bring little prophets offering for us. And we prophesy and we lie to them. Because we know that their gifts the way it is. Someone comes to meet you and says, I want to have a, a construction company. How many years experience do you have? Nothing. Do you have a very credible engineer? No. You are the one who is the CEO of the company. What did you study? You studied fashion. How does fashion relate with building stadiums and building bridges? You are an entrepreneur. Do you have the required engineers? No. But he's my tribesman. And they now bring one million for the man of God. And the man of God said, go. It is done. I told you last week, it's not done. Don't let anybody fool you like that. Favor is when preparedness meets opportunity. 
Favor, hear me, is when preparedness meets opportunity. You want a job, but please and please, before I prophesy to you, have you done your homework? Are we together now? You are trusting God for a job somewhere. Before I speak to you, have you learned people's skills? Have you mastered your art? Do you know your onions? Can you deliver competently? Don't come and ask me to prophesy into your life when you cannot, you have not done your homework. It's a mockery on God. So God gives you an opportunity. You have not mastered your cooking and they now tell you cook for 300 people. The name of your company is Goodness Catering Services. That it has a spiritual name has nothing to do with the fact that good results will be delivered. You now cook food for the 300 people and you make the person who recommended you to look stupid. He did something to you as a favor because you are his church member, but on your part you could not deliver. Before you start crying for favor, make sure you have something in your hand. Well enough to deliver. Father, give me a good husband. Have you mastered the art of being a good wife? When was the last book you read? And when was the last time you read it? Are we together? Oh God, give me children. What have you studied about parenting? Or you are just concentrating on trying to make sure your wife takes in. Have you studied on parenting? You see, many times, let me tell you something. Get my teaching, Activating Seasons of Favor. The Lord taught me never to pray necessarily for opportunities. Because time and chance opportunities and seasons happen to them all one day like the hand of a clock your turn will come it must come but the key is to prepare so that the day you enter the presence of greatness you will never have to return again say amen competence i like you to say after me in the name of jesus i am gifted oh come on koinonia chorus it in the name of jesus I am gifted. I am anointed. The ability of the Spirit is at work in me. And I cooperate with God by refining those gifts. Knowing this, that a day of favor must come to me. And I do not want to abuse that day. One day, in the life of any man listen one day in the life of any man you will be seated before your destiny helpers it's up to you to deliver to the latter are we together i dread any time in my life when i will stand in the presence of greatness and would not have built capacity that is sufficient enough to open for me a door I dread the time when Koinonia will be 100,000 members and yet I do not have the leadership capacity to manage those crowds. Do you think God will give you? There are certain people God pegs them at a level because that's the only level that will make them relevant and yet spiritual. Anything outside that is beyond their ability to manage. There are people who can only manage anything less than 1 million. They have not trained their minds and their lives to be able to manage those kinds of resources. God will not give you 100 million. If you saw it in a dream, wake up. It's a dream. It is your capacity that will make it happen in your life. I, Daniel, understood by books. You must buy the truth and sell it not. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Write it down refine your gifts don't just identify them refine them they are the keys they are your bailout they are your bailout the concept of something for nothing is wickedness hello koinonia listen to me the concept of something for nothing is wickedness everybody rises according to their contribution our rewards in life will always be in direct measure to our contribution to want to become a millionaire 
giving the contributions of a pauper is wickedness that's why thieves are called thieves that's why we arrest them when we find them why because they use guns they don't contribute anything yet they want your money are we together so they bully you they say your money or your life bill gates is the way he is today because we can see his contribution you know why we insult politicians and we call them wicked they get their money by corruption we cannot see the value commensurate to what they have we see a man who is a local government chairman we do not see any developmental strides we don't see any entrepreneurial acumen yet we see billions in his account we know that that is questionable this is the basis upon which people are accused you don't accuse a man when you can see the value he's providing if i can provide the value of a billionaire you should not have a problem with billions in my account are we together now yes the question i want to ask you is that seat of greatness you want present to me the value that you are offering that authorizes you to sit there nothing for many of us are we seeing now a woman once asked me to pray for her i think she owned a school and she said things were not working the students were leaving and she said a prophet came around to pray he fed son he prayed and told her there's something somebody in another school one other mama that had his neighboring school that she came and buried a uh, charm in in the, the madam's own school so that she would not prosper when the woman told me that thing i said madam i minister deliverance to people but i can tell you this is nonsense that prophet that uh, the, the 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 prophet man i may not call him fake but i know that he's not seen clearly because most people use wizardry and wizardry peeps it's in the bible he said we are not like wizards right that peep they peep into the realm of the spirit there is no accurate knowledge they summon strange spirits to deliver information for them which can be aberrated so he comes and the woman thinks the only reason why her school is not growing well why should i send my child to her school your school uniform alone depicts non-excellence you don't know that colors are communicators check shirt check check short knicker that's a school uniform for instance and then you put red or blue socks carelessly done with one tailor who is not competent but is a brother to the principal and so you allow the person to sew anything you see someone very tall and his 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 his, his trouser is, is just at, around his lap no excellence what of the teachers the teach i'm not i'm not being insulted but the teachers themselves look at the result of the person teaching them accounting f9 in accounting f9 in math f9 in economics f9 in commerce he's the chief he's even the head of department of maybe social sciences why because they attend the same church i'm telling you why people fail there is a place for the spiritual but never think incompetence will be substituted for um, our competence will be substituted for for prayer now it is that kind of school you finish everything the name is not good there is no intelligent pta uh, uh, parents teacher forum they are always fighting you are increasing the school fees every term every session but there is no commensurate development you write yx 60 people write junior yx only five have up to five credits the students are not so dull the teachers don't understand what they are doing it is that kind of school you write in miracle service and drop it and bring a seed and say lord that school must change and every time you pray god tells you go and meet somebody who has the best school in a city usually those kinds of people they fight those who are doing well because they think they are colleagues we all have schools what is what is the name of your own you are not delivering let me tell you what keeps people incompetent don't think because you are doing the same thing another person is doing that that means you are colleagues are we together yes there are men of god i see i know i honor them with my life i know that we are all men of god but i know there are levels and there are standards i will not sit down and say oh this no 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 no. everybody is clapping for joshua selman the same way they are clapping for me i'm clapping for others too are we together now 
But this colleague mentality is what keeps people incompetent. You have a supermarket. It brings you one million per day. You have a small kiosk. It brings you maybe 15,000 per day. You now sit down together. We are all wearing suits. We are colleagues. Are you doing the same thing? No. Are you getting the same result? No. But in our arrogance, we say, we the entrepreneurs. This guy has a kiosk. This guy has a shopping mall. But that humility to learn. There is a saying in Hausa that the person who can ask for road will never get missing. The, the keys to make us competent are there. It just takes meekness. But many of us are too embarrassed to improve. We are too ashamed to seek knowledge. Especially because that knowledge we want may come from those who are younger than us, less privileged than us, so we don't submit ourselves to listen. I've been in ministry for 10 years. It's not working. But you say we are still ministry. We are part of PFN. We are part of CAN. A young man comes and in three years he's doing remarkable things. I said, forget about all those small children. He's young. That's why he's attracting his age mates. Have your age mates died? Why don't you attract them? Excuses that are reflectors of our, our lack of desire to move forward. I made up my mind. It's a vow I have made with destiny that in every area where the Lord wants me to excel, I will master it and I will lead the field in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are a preacher here, I'm speaking to you. Don't join people when they are clapping for you and saying, Joshua Selman, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah. They are destroying you. Thank God for their applause, but go back and say it's time to walk. Be committed to personal development. You are a businessman. You hit your first million. You don't cross your leg and say, my soul, find rest. No. You say the journey is just about to start. Thank God for all those things. But I need to learn. Who needs to mentor me? Who needs to build me? Champions are champions because they keep moving. Mediocres are mediocres because they stop moving. Give yourself to continuous improvement. Continuous development. Number five. The fifth law in the kingdom is the ministry of destiny helpers. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. May God bring a helper to your life. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. Please media help us. Mark 2 1 to 5. I'm teaching you the fifth law that is responsible for producing champions, giants in the kingdom. Will you open up the gates? gates. Open up the doors. Will you open up the gates? Again, he entered into Capernaum. Please, let's read this down to verse 5. After some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. This is Jesus now. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now something remarkable happens, verse 3. And they came unto him. You, isn't it interesting that the Bible hardly mentions the names of destiny helpers? It just says, they, certain men, a certain man, never mentions their names, but mentions what they did. Let me tell you something. Destiny helpers do not even know they are destiny helpers. It says, bringing one who was sick of palsy, which was born of four. That means four people carried him. Four destiny helpers carrying a man. It says, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, what did they do? They uncovered the roof where he was, Jesus now. And when they had broken it up, 
they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay verse 5 when jesus saw their faith he said unto the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee when you read on he was eventually healed watch this write this down destiny helpers are people who have been anointed assigned and commissioned to bless you and to take you to the next level of your destiny anointed assigned by god commission when elijah was about to die of hunger in brook cherry the holy ghost spoke to him and said go to a city called zarephath he said dear i have commanded a widow the widow never act, she never acted like she was commanded but god told the prophet i have commanded i have compelled her spirit to respond to you listen no matter how hard working you are no matter how competent you are in the dealings of god with men a time must come in your life when someone else will have to lift you please come shadrach shadrach is right at this level everybody please see watch this call this a level in life i am up here standing his desire is to come up here now he has done well he's played his part well suited but he has the gift the grace the anointing but no access are we together now he needs an introduction of a personality or certain personalities in his life called destiny helpers listen to me the assignment of a destiny helper is to take you from where you are to the next phase of your life please i want you to listen because some of us are at this level right now the truth is you have refined your gift the truth is you are competent but you are saying lord where is that man where is that woman who must speak there are three kinds of destiny helpers please write this quickly three kinds of destiny helpers sorry shadrach you have to stand okay go ahead just just write number one the first kinds of destiny helpers are called divine connectors divine connectors second kings chapter five divine connectors please give us from verse one to five second kings five from verse one to five learn this what i'm teaching you is not basic at all it's not simple at all it's a deep mystery in the kingdom that produces giants the first kind of destiny helpers are called divine connectors who are they let me tell you who they are they are men and women who do not have the physical capacity to lift you but they can they have access they can point you to those who can lift you they do not have the anointing to heal you but they can take you to a church where you will be healed they do not have money to give you but they can take you to somebody who can help you they are called divine connectors their assignment is to connect you they don't have the power in themselves to help you are we together but they have access to an information that you need here is a situation a great man called naaman the bible says he was the captain of the host of the king of syria listen he says he was a great man with his master an honorable man because by him the lord had given deliverance to syria he says he was also a mighty man in valor but there was an area in his life lacking he was blessed spiritually blessed maritally but financially something was still hanging are we together he had excelled in every area but certain areas were still hanging and a miracle is about to happen to him verse 2 and the syrians had gone out by companies and had brought listen away captive out of the land of israel who a little maid you see no name again no name take note of this little girl because she's about to be a destiny connector he says a little maid and she waited upon naman's wife she was a pa to the big man's wife one day something happened next verse 
she said unto her mistress would God my Lord with the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy that's a destiny connector the little girl said I know I'm a, I'm a captive but while I was in Israel there is a man I know that that man is powerful I pray that my being little will not make you to not listen if you can please talk to your husband that he should go to that prophet I know he will be healed these are destiny connectors Sam I know you have this talent but I was browsing and I saw that there is an international music auditioning I'm not a musician but I thought the information may be important for you certain men destiny connectors are we together now this lady had no power to heal the man but she knew a prophet Kai, who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody around your life that you have ignored there is someone who knows who will bless you but you have ignored them because they do not have capacity in themselves to help you let's run through this very quickly and one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is in the land there of verse 5. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go and I will send a letter, so on and so forth, and all of that. And when you read down to verse 10, Naaman, on account of, in fact, no, 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 let, let's go to verse, let's go to verse 8. Can we go to verse 8? There's something I want to point out there. Listen. And it was so when Elisha the man of God heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes because the king was afraid right and then Elisha said let him come now and see whether and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel read on and so on and so forth Elisha came go to verse 12 listen look at this he had told him to go and bath in the river of Jordan now historically speaking jordan at the time this man was given an instruction was not clean very dirty are we together so the man felt at my status to go and bath watch this he says are not all of these rivers you know better and all of that so he returned and went away in rage this is where i'm trying to go he was at the point of his breakthrough but in anger he was about to miss his miracle the destiny helper comes again and, the, and his servants came near and spake to him, listen, and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do something worse, will you not do it? Somebody came and spoke to him. Are we together again? And said, No, no, let me encourage you. And that man went to bath. When you read 14 and 15, he bathed seven times. And his skin, the Bible records, was like that of a child, that of a baby destiny connectors i pray for you in the name of jesus christ that god will give you the sensitivity to see that men may be ordinary but they carry extraordinary things are we together now they may be your younger ones they may be children they may not have the ability to bless you but i pray that you have the discernment to listen to them when they speak to you in the name of jesus christ the second kinds of destiny helpers are called men of influence the second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence mark chapter 15 verse 43 please give it to us very fast let's let's be fast about it mark 15 verse 43 it says joseph of arimathea this was jesus christ now right we, we shared a bit of this during our prayer and fasting I'm reiterating it for so that we can believe Josh, um, joseph of arimathea an honorable counselor the bible says which also waited for the kingdom of god came and used his honor or influence he went boldly before pilate and prayed for the body of jesus listen there are men in your life who can use their influence to open doors for you and to endorse you before great men you need them a time must come in your life where you will need them are we together do you know that please come assuming this lady is looking for a job are we together? 
this lady is looking for a job she's tried and tried but the privilege god has given me to lead this ministry we have very influential people scattered around who honor the grace of god in my life and i appreciate it i can use my influence are we together and meet somebody someone like our daddy prof and say daddy please there is a lady here honestly she can be good for a secretary i endorse this lady i know that this lady is good daddy please do you have any friend that can give her a job do you know he may not have planned blessing her but because my influence is a middleman between two of them he's compelled by his honor for me to do something about her situation and this girl will get a job are we together god bless you there are men of influence those who preach and say you should not mind men of influence let me tell you what they are telling you remain where you are forever because it will take a joseph of arimathea to speak to the king for you men of influence men of influence i've shared the story here in koinonia true story that a, a guy who wanted to go to nda but there was a height level that he needed to 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 get to and he was short of it maybe by a few inches and they were about to deny him that opportunity and somebody who had connection to the emir of zazo here the emir of of, of of zaria and all of that um came and met the gentleman and they wrote a letter no he didn't even write a letter he said they should go and tell the commandant of nda that the emir of zazo has added his height come on now that's called influence if the commandant does not act he knows what that means <laughs> to his daily bread to his career are we together look let me tell you influence is a force that moves men to their destiny don't you ever make anyone make you criticize influential people i pray for them in my life i want them in my life i desire them in my life one of the priceless things i learned about my father my father is connected to men of influence almost everywhere if it's police station my father knows somebody in the police station prisons my father knows someone if your car breaks down no matter the brand there is a mechanic somewhere my father knows it's an attribute in his life i covet earnestly are we together who do you know brothers and sisters that can bail you out of this wicked nigeria you can buy land as a born again believer and somebody can just come as a politician to bully you may god raise a man of influence to call him and say if you touch my pastor i touch your job influence you need influence in this life you see the people in the world are smarter than believers we sit down and keep praying in tongues and we fool ourselves you need influence bishop oyedeko is great today i know he's great as an anointed man but it's not just because he's an anointed man he's a pastor of influential people are we together if the managers of five banks are members of your church are we together your chief financial secretary is the is the is the ceo of zenith bank will you be poor as a church please answer me will you be poor as a church don't say it does not matter keep fooling yourself it matters big time in this country we live in you need men of influence many of our parents ignore them that's why they are suffering may god make you a destiny helper to someone that one letter from you to say no no i know this person in the name of jesus christ Amen. i want god to make me a man of influence i am very unapologetic about it I want God to connect me to politicians, to connect me to business people, to connect me to diplomats. I'm not part of those liars in church who will say it doesn't matter. I'm just a righteous man. I have fortified myself. I will still be holy with them and I will take advantage of the influence for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When the former president, I heard a very funny story. I will only say part of it. The former president uh, of Nigeria did something funny to one prominent um will i call him father elder statesman in nigeria he did something funny to him 
and um, within three days he received a call from about five presidents this is verified they all called him and said what are you doing we had you did so, so and so to this man he made a request you didn't grant it the president himself was trying to call the man to beg him he didn't even pick his call this is verified i'm not just this ah may god make koinonia a place of influence please answer that amen well in the name of jesus christ hallelujah men of influence the key to strategic kingdom advancement is key influence not just evangelism that you are surrounded by men that matter so that somebody will not come with a tractor and bulldoze your church because he thinks he has influence uh -uh. influence gives you a voice the bible says a rich man's wealth is his strength it's, it's a fortification you need men of influence around your life there's too much wickedness who do you know in the army that god can use to speak for you who do you know in the military who do you know in the banking system who has god connected you with in the area of medicine if someone is about to die do you know a, an influential consultant who can facilitate his papers to go to india you need men of influence say i need men of influence open your mouth and pray in one minute send them to my life send them in my life send them in my life shabarako sebradi Lord, I pray one man of influence can change the story of your generation. One man of influence. Just one. Some of you, that's what brought you to Koinonia. You are saying, oh God, I need a miracle. God is speaking to you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. You know they say when they post you nysc once they post you and nobody can walk it before once nysc starts there is no hope of you being redeployed so they told you in my presence i have seen people four months in nysc carried away not marriage not pregnancy somebody used his influence and said i need this person for his personal comfort to be in an area it was quietly done in ABU, you call it third list, but there are many lists according to what influence can bring. Are we together? There are people whose admission letters are printed overnight, jammed irrespective. Come on now, cut off point nonsense. A voice is the cut off point, influence, and God brings them. If you do not have men of influence, you will join the queue in life. And the queue does not move that's the sad thing about the queue in life there are too many greedy people in front of you who will not allow the queue move even when they have it they won't give you chance they will stay there till they die so the hope of you moving to your place of destiny will be impossible how many look at redeemed and living faith in every city in every place they have land do you know there are territories that antagonize Christians they will not give you land but they had influence they spoke to one allergy who knows what their prayer did for him and said you better talk to your local government chairman to give us land and they say please give my pastor land as an allergy as much as he wants that's what influence can do may god give you influence in the name of jesus there are many churches in zaria who want to buy large properties there are there are lands around but they may never give churches they may never give certain people because they say one somebody holds it no 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 no. you watch what will happen in the name of jesus with koinonia let me tell you everybody on earth is a tenant nobody has a right to bully anybody for land god will give us land that will shock you it will be as if they brought it from heaven and just say pick it will happen by the spirit I'm not one of those fearful people who will not move. The earth is the Lord. But you see, it's not just the voice of heaven from the voice of God from heaven. God will connect you to somebody. I have prayed for many unbelievers and I'm happy about it because they will remember my prayer the day I need their help. I prayed for them. If God gives them breakthrough, tomorrow we'll say, please, we need your influence to buy. 10 hectares of land for koinonia 
and they will say let it be done if they refuse the man will buy it in his name and sell it to us influence our parents rejected men of influence now they are paying for everything just to give somebody admission in secondary school see how we fast and pray whereas one signature can answer that prayer i pray for you from the depth of my heart any man who needs to enter your life who has the influence you require may the god that i serve bring them into your life may the god that i serve bring them into your life please hear me every man on earth answers yes sir to someone are we together if they refuse to tell you go ahead find who they answer yes sir to and they will answer yes sir to you too he said for i am a man under authority i am under authority so there are others under my authority there is no man who is no matter how people make themselves gods don't be threatened by men's noise they only talk every animal claims to be the king of the jungle until the lion shows up when the lion shows up he doesn't say keep quiet they will be silent whoever has robbed your family of what is their due whoever has closed the door for you there are many of us your qualification can give you a job but the people endorsing you are like you so their words are not heard may god bring a, a man whose signature matters in the name of jesus christ there's no nonsense like a door that is closed it's a mirage someone can open that door I've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy people. I've had the privilege of meeting very influential people. And I have seen the way doors open just like that. I've seen doors open just like that. I remember one time, one of our chairman, um, the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general in the army. I remember when he was a colonel, sometime in Lagos, you know, we are so close and every time from the airport he will send the military people with the car his car and then with military bikes nobody does any checking as soon as they are coming they just flash light and they salute them access because of influence who told you driver's license takes three months it is the general thing when my international passport expired the general himself he drove me sir with his car we went to passport office in abuja in kaduna i even did the first one in abuja so it was even complicated in 30 minutes how many minutes about 30 minutes or so they brought out my passport for me and i was ready to go the woman who did it the madam there last year i went to minister in nigerian immigration their fellowship their chapel when i went there there was a woman they had moved her there and quickly i made friends with her because my passport would expire again <laughs> keep laughing at me don't lend the wisdom in what i'm saying listen when you see men of influence don't resent them you resent them because pastors have taught you they are all unbelievers don't mind them mind them mind them just make sure their influence does not destroy you but please mind them don't have that mindset of throwing men of influence and think every gate will open to you just like that but the greatest key is to become an influence yourself when you become an influence you become a magnet to influential people oh that's why i love the anointing goodness 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 the anointing will bail you out it will make you an influence you will not just look for men of influence they will come to you the bible calls them gentiles it calls their kings he said they will come to the brightness of your rising the last kind of destiny helpers are faithful men faithful men men who will stay with you in the thick and thin 90 percent of the people you will ever meet in your life don't like you they come to you simply because of your gift and what you represent you will hardly find people who love you for who you are but in your life there are men you will find who love you for who you are they will stay with you 
for time's sake first first samuel 22 verse 1 and 2 please let's hurry up first samuel 22 verse 1 and 2 you reign you reign hello him you reign you reign you reign David therefore departed thence. David was running away from Saul. Saul was about to kill David because he was termed a rebel. Are we together? Now David ran. And the Bible says he escaped to a cave, not a palace, a cave called Adullam. But the Bible says, and when his brethren and all his father's house had, they did what? They followed him to that cave. There are men that can follow you even when you are in the cave. May God bring them to your life. Let me tell you something. Listen. One of the most disastrous things for a leader is to not find men who believe in you when things are not going well. They leave you alone when you are lonely. But there are certain destiny helpers called faithful men. Are we together? Faithful. He said a friend is made for adversity there are many of us when you go through bad things there's nobody to stand there with you when everything works well everybody comes but there are a kind of destiny helpers called faithful men verse 2 and everyone that was in distress one that was in debt everyone who was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became what captain over them in a cave how do you submit to a man who is a failure how do you submit to a ministry that does not have result how do you remain loyal to a business that is not working it's called faithfulness there are such men there are such men we were discussing the other day with Ejimi about a particular man of God who had gone through rough times in his life and nothing had changed about his ministry not one person we know of influence had left the ministry because of what happened and i said they are called faithful men they are not called men of god they are not called assistants they are called faithful men may god position them in your life how many great men in this country have fallen and they are left alone there are some of us when our parents were wealthy there were all kinds of relatives now right now there's nobody to even pay your school fees because there are no faithful men there are psychophants around in our world but there are people called faithful men the bible says that he was captain over them and they were with him in a cave 400 people in a cave there was no hope it's not like they were there hoping things would change they were saying if we die let's die with you God. if you are a leader here please let me give you a secret every time you pray don't just pray for gifted people pray for faithful men a faithful man is better than a gifted man a gifted rebel is not an asset hallelujah verse 3 and then we'll stop and david went thence to the okay let's just stop there i'm not going to read let me give you the next verse to read first chronicles first chronicles that will tell you the whole story all till but, but then we are looking at something else. First Chronicles 12. Let's read 1 to 3, then move to verse 38. First Chronicles 12, 1 to 3, then 38. Let me show you something very powerful about these faithful men. Look at this. He said, now these are the men that came to David in, Zig in Ziklag. I'm fast forwarding now. He says, while he kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish. He said, they were among the mighty men. What did he call them? helpers of the war so they had stayed with him even when he had now become mighty and was ready to fight he trained them they remained there they had now become helpers of the war and it lists all of them go to verse 38 for time's sake 
Read with me, please, everybody. Hallelujah. Mm. All these men of war that could keep rank. Do you know what that? Hold on. That means when David told them, you stand as a musician, they remained as a musician because David said it. Absolute loyalty, regardless of results. Are we together? He says they came with what? A perfect heart. Nobody was doing eye service. They loved him genuinely. They were willing to die for him genuinely. He said to make David king. Their determination. They said, David, you don't need to bribe us. We, we are alive to make sure the word of the Lord in your life will come to pass. Do you know God can send this man with you? Everything in your life can nose dive. And they will come and say, Jimmy, if everyone will leave you, I will be here for you. Whether your wife gets pregnant or not, I am here for you. How many pastors are hiding many things in their lives? Because if members know, they will run away because they are selfish people. But there is a grace. I truly believe there is a grace that attracts faithful men to the life of a man. Watch the kinds of people you are attracting. And don't be too quick to say these people are my friends. We even say they are my right hand men. A friend is made for adversity. Adversity separates people. You will be shocked to see how many people will call you king of the Jews and crucify you tomorrow. But this guy said they were with a perfect heart to make sure a Jimmy becomes that CEO. With a perfect heart to make sure that Abiodun gets to that place of destiny. So even if they would die in the process, no problem. There are such men. Listen, he said, and all the rest also in Israel were of one heart to make David king. They threw away their own personal agenda and said, David, for as long as you are not king, we will not rest. Do you have such people in your life who will take responsibility and say for as long as you have not gotten that federal government job i will not rest you can call and say Kai uncle you have tried don't worry god is faithful he said god is faithful i take it as a ministry to make sure you become gainfully employed and they will run left right and center while you are sleeping they are awake they are saying help my son when they captured reverend Ntia Ntia is in Akwaibo, Ibom Uyo. when they captured him Dr. Paul Enencher said he could not sleep because it's not just because he was his spiritual son. He said no, he began to engage certain forces and he started making calls all around. Called his spiritual parents. Oyedepo, they called Adeboye, called federal government people and called people and said, You better look for those assassins and release Intia, Intia right now. Dr. Paul Enencher went himself to acquire bomb and went to prophesy on that soil and say i command that my son be released faithful man is it not enough to pray from your house when a man leaves his house to your own to help you it's no longer just friendship it's called faithfulness pray in one minute lord bring faithful men i'm tired of false people in my life take what i'm saying seriously i'm teaching you mysteries that will make your life flawless faithful men faithful men even when they know what you have done they say it will never change my relationship with you pray there are businessmen who crash just with one scandal because everybody around them is a psychophant there are pastors who crash with just one rumor because there are no faithful men it's a terrible thing to live your life building men to, and then realizing that they are not faithful. Make sure you are praying. Lord, bring faithful men to my life. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus had a crowd just like Koinonia. He was teaching them. They were there for different reasons. One time... He taught a message that was too hot for them. The Bible said they started leaving. There were only certain people, his disciples that stayed. And he asked them a question. He said, will you not also leave? And then Peter, he said, to whom shall we go? 
don't you know we are sold out to whom shall we go he said you alone have the word of life and when they were crucifying peter theologically historically they kept peter and were about to nail him and peter said i have one request i know i would die but i'm i'm not worthy to die in the same position with jesus turn me upside down and let me die faithfulness unto death i like you to pray especially those of us who are trusting god for marriage by the time all you have in your life is a man who just wants you because of figure eight you are in trouble by the time you have a woman who just likes you because you have money or you are working in shell you are in trouble lift your voice and say faithful men faithful men faithful men pray faithful men faithful men anointed to stay with your vision anointed to stay with your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many people who pray for me the prayer department prays for me my parents pray for me but there is a woman you have never seen the woman i met this woman in a meeting and the woman said she had a revelation when she listened to my message she said i have entered a covenant with god she said i'm an intercessor i've entered a covenant with god that until i go to heaven i am an intercessor for you and your ministry god is i've never given this woman one naira god is my witness you can ask the protocol and all those who follow me they don't even know the woman i have never given her one naira once in a while she will just send me text and say my son just know your mother is praying for you i tell you there are times i'll be trusting god all decisions and her text just comes faithful people they will never ask for money they will never ask and say when you get there it's chop by chop they 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 see it as a ministry to make sure you prosper i've seen people like that with all humility and by the grace of god one of such people is our daddy here i remember when um there was a time that you know we're looking for the venue for ministry and all of that do you know daddy took the responsibility single-handedly there are still people here they they would ask about koinonia as if it's even their ministry it's like they are more concerned about it than me i sent a text to a few people telling them we're trusting god to buy land you know to, to to get land and all of that and one of the women sent and said i've been waiting for this she said i've been waiting for this make sure when it starts my contribution comes in she said i will be offended if my money is not part of the money that is used to buy land faithful men a pastor may have nothing but faithful men and i tell you he has more than assets he may not be able to play the keyboard well but he's faithful he will die with you are we together there are people who were once in this ministry today they have left some of them are abroad they are the ones spreading koinonia messages around i don't know them but they take those messages all around it's an anointing that is upon this ministry faithfulness i tell you we don't force people to do anything here there is a grace i saw it in certain ministries i pursued it like a man pursues water when i found it i got it and i knew many of us have too many disloyal people in our lives you are not sure of anybody close to you they will laugh with you now and when they turn they can say crucify him let me tell you no matter how careful you are you cannot make men faithful by yourself it would take a heart under god for them to vow and say i love this man i am loyal to him to death there are people today if they bring a gun to shoot they will stand and receive that shooting for me i know that not everybody but there are people you need that in your life because you are dear facebooking people chatting with people and saying you are my best friend you are my best this they will leave you let me tell you something when the going gets tough because in every man's life there are valleys there are times of challenge how many wives left their husbands 
simply because for one year there was no money they packed their load and went how many husbands left their wives and started looking for another small girl simply because after five years she could not give them a child faithfulness is important don't think i'm joking when I, when we are saying this please i want you to pray again and say lord in my life send faithful men i told you they are anointed they are commissioned they are anointed they are commissioned they don't just come they are sent send faithful men send faithful men hallelujah number six please sit down we're rounding up the last key that controls undeniable results and impact in the kingdom this is probably the greatest of the laws that I know. It's called the law of honor. Pay attention. Somebody's life is about to change. The law of honor. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. There is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results in the kingdom. Listen, I'm establishing the law of honor. The law of honor is predicated upon a revelation that there is an anointing. Hear me. There is a grace for every dimension in the kingdom. Results do not just happen. There are graces that activate possibilities. There is a kind of grace that brings influence. There is a kind of grace that brings wealth. There is a kind of grace that brings freshness. Are we together now? So that's the first thing you need to know about the law of honor. That there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results. How you know there is a grace working is when the result becomes consistent regardless of the opposing situations. When a result becomes consistent, there is a law and a grace at work. Number two, human beings are god's reservoirs of spiritual anointings spiritual graces god keeps his anointings in men not in jars not in goya oil they can just be prophetic contacts but god's instruments god's instrument for hosting his anointing listen he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what? Look up. Did he say shall receive God's reward? There is something called a prophet reward. It's the reward that goes with his office. Are we together? It is the possibility he can release to you in honor of the God he serves and the office he represents and it does not just mean a man of god it's a law every time you see a man walking in a dimension consistently regardless of opposing forces there is a grace making that i have seen people in my life they are not very wealthy but they never beg i don't know what kind of grace that is the moment supplies are about to finish something else comes they never have one billion but they never lack if they need to travel abroad someone pays for the visa i've seen these people very strange people they kneel down and say lord send help from zion and men are rushing they will not bring one billion they don't have 20 cars they may just have one or two cars but you will come to their house you will never beg for bread it's a grace are we together when you see a ministry exploding in membership there is a grace when you see people moving from one dimension to the other there is a grace you can see a lady who may not even represent what supposedly 
most ladies may think brothers want in sisters yet you find 10 12 15 brothers flocking around and everybody saying this and that she can say no i'm in a relationship he say close that one and, and come to me I'm, I'm ready to whatever it takes and you are wondering come my brother is it that is it that this lady is gold he says me too i don't know it's a grace are we together that lady will leave that ministry and go to another one where nobody knows her and the result becomes the same there are people when they ask you something you can't say no you you swear heaven and hell and say this is the last time i'll give anybody this this lantern they just knock and say edge me please can you help me with it you stand up like a zombie and pick it there is a grace there is a grace I have seen this there is a grace that brings a healing anointing in a ministry it's not just by faith there are people who have these graces now listen to me please your life revolves around the levels of the possibilities you have activated I wish what I were saying were a lie I would have quietly apologized and just sat down but this is true it has changed my life it is changing my life it has changed this ministry it is changing this ministry the law of honor is the cheapest route to greatness the law of honor i used to think service was the cheapest route until i learned the law of honor my goodness you can quantum leap your destiny in one day you can veto imperfections in your life by practicing the law of honor. It has worked in my life like a charm. The Bible says, He that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He that receives a fruitful woman in the name of a fruitful woman shall receive what? A fruitful woman's reward. He that receives a millionaire in the name of a millionaire will receive a millionaire's reward the keys that made him what he is listen you can men are dimensional that you are close to a man does not mean you have exhausted his dimensions there is joshua selman the human being there is joshua selman the friend there is joshua selman the man of god are we together there is joshua selman the businessman there is joshua selman the whatever it is there is a dimension you have not seen if you only know me as a man of god you receive that reward if i become your friend you will have access to certain things that people will not have are we together if you come to see me in the capacity of a man of god you can sit down i will open my fridge and serve you because you are coming as a man of God. But if you come as my friend, when a Jimmy comes to see me, whatever I'm eating is what he will just pick it and keep eating. He has he is not going to ask me. We will even talk about it. He wants malt, he can open the fridge and carry it and we'll take. Are we together? Because we are friends. Are we together? But when we begin to talk, we align to the relevant dimensions that reflect the graces we carry. When I'm talking to my parents, we can crack jokes. But when I'm about to say something serious, I switch. Because I'm talking to men who brought me to this world. They have an anointing to speak over my life. Are we together? You can see me greet our daddy and just crack jokes. But when I'm about to talk to him, I talk to him in the capacity of the grace he carries. Are we together now? That's why you see us do certain things like some of our elderly ones. We don't let them just join the queue. They sit down. These things are communications of honor. That's why we provide buses for you after the service. It's not just that we have money to throw around. No. It is to honor you. It's a law of honor. Because it is our belief in this ministry that everybody seated is carrying an anointing. And most of those anointings, we need it. And so we honor you to receive it. Are we together now? Yes. You want a car, you see somebody who has a car, you buy fuel. You are receiving him in the name of a car owner. You will get a car owner's reward. You see someone in a relationship, you don't keep gossiping about his relationship. You package a seed 
and sow into his life and sow into that lady's life and say whatever made you get this good man whatever made you get this good woman you got this woman when you were not born again meaning it was not your effort this is grace i need it you sow into that life you are working someone is not working and you are saying is it teacher that i'll sow into you see so you never rise one day you get up in the morning and wash the person's clothes and iron the clothes and he gets up and says, ah, my roommate, what is this for? He said, I didn't iron it as roommate. I'm tired of joblessness. I'm tapping into the grace, that frequency in the spirit that afforded you opportunity. Out of the millions of jobless people, you got a job. How many barren people have honored those who have children? They will criticize them. Hallelujah. An anointing you have dishonored has run away from your life an anointing you have refused to bring into your life through honor maybe the reason why you are grounded hear me i'm rounding up you saw a prayer grace in koinonia and you felt please these guys just pray too loud they just shout like idiots i like the excellence i like the word but the prayer and so you find out that you pray for five minutes and snore your life away because you ignore that grace it's called the spirit of prayer and supplication you saw grace for an accurate understanding of the word and you criticize it that's why those who criticize great men never become great you see why our parents are sincere but the way they are they criticize every preacher on tv they criticize every actor they criticize every government worker when they watch news everything is criticism they insult everybody who have you insulted to your detriment whose anointing have you resented let me tell you the key to activating the law of honor. Number one, you must believe in God. Number two, you must believe in the vessel who is the carrier of that anointing. You must not just believe in the person, you must believe in the office, the operation of that anointing. I, I pray for you that you get this. We're about to pray, but you need to get this. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reference you, Lord, for in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reference you, Lord. Listen, I have followed men and women who have carried on common graces not just in ministry i have i have i have honored them with my life i saw into different tv ministries because koinonia will soon have their own tv ministry i never open my mouth and criticize anybody's tv ministry because somebody is going to be watching our own soon so i plant a seed of honor are we together now I sow into the lives of people's children because I'm planting a seed of honor for my own children. I don't want my children begging for school fees, begging for bread. So I take care of other people's children. That's why I don't kick children and throw them out here. I take care of them. Let me tell you something. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, without fail, except for the mercy of God, he will receive it. We have criticized people. You have not started ministry. Yet every man of God does not have Rema for you. You are in for a shock. In for a big shock. You have not started business. Yet you look and say, Kai, this guy, he's talking, talking, talking. It's as if he's by luck, except he built this company. Continue talking. No reference for people's sacrifices. Let me tell you something. Behind every glory, there is a story if you do not respect the story and the glory you will never replicate it in your life never ever 
Never ever. There are people by the grace of God who I have never met eyeball to eyeball. I've heard about them. They have reproduced the grace upon my life far batting. Every anointing you see is yours for the taking. But the key is honor. Honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands. Let me tell you something. Honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands. You have heard that there is a favor anointing in this ministry. I don't know whether you believe it or not. There are many people who never believe it. So you will sit down with circles of disfavor. Whereas people are recording unending testimonies of the hand of God. By the grace of God, everything we do in this ministry prospers. It's a grace. Have you tapped into it? Is it working for you? Listen, as a faithful person in this ministry, you should be a reflection, an epistle of the graces and the anointings that are here. Don't let people come from somewhere. You see how people behave when they come from other places. Their hearts are open. They are not distracted because they are coming only for a few hours or a few days and going back. But many people just sit down. Koinonia, koinonia. And they enjoy. And after the grace, they stand up and walk away. Proximity to an anointing does not release it upon your life. It takes honor. Honor is the spiritual magnet that brings graces to people. Me and Ejimi were watching a man of God one time. And I looked at this man of God. I said, Kai, this guy carries an uncommon grace for wealth. An uncommon grace. He's not so fluent. He's not even so intelligent. You know that there are many business principles this guy does not know. But there is, there is an uncommon grace. This guy had 10 cars in 10 weeks. One, one every week. Uncommon grace. And we said, no, this guy knows what he's saying. I will not criticize such a man. I will listen with my heart open. I can ignore his imperfections and get what I need. Listen, anointings do not flow through perfect vessels. Joshua Selman is not a perfect vessel. If you are waiting for perfection, you may never enter certain levels of grace. Ignore the imperfections and get the anointing. We are going to pray. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Shabala katabara to say. I will reverence you. I will reverence you. There are things that were not in my life before. I know they were not there. I knew when they came. I honored my way through them. Honor is not human worship. Honor is not even giving somebody offering. It's just a communication. The honor is a recognition and a celebration of the hand of God and the sacrifice of that person in the secret and in the open. There are men of God I will never talk against in secret and in the open. It doesn't mean I agree with everything they do. Honestly, I don't. However, I honor them with my life. I'm not ashamed to declare that they are custodians of certain levels of grace. You receive it. We have resented people. Little results in our lives. But we are very quick to resent people. You see a lady getting married and you look and say, Ah, and she's not fine. No, Kai, the way God does his thing, Seth. See? That's what your eyes could see. What you just said in the realm of the spirit is I dissociate myself from this experience. That's what you have said. Every time you communicate dishonor, that's what you say. Lord, I dissociate myself from this experience. We are going to pray. Six laws I have given you. You will play them like a computer game and watch your life skyrocket. You will, you will tame life like a chess. You know how people play chess. Life is not magic. It's not chance. As haphazard as it is, there is a synergy. There is a rhythm to life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you see everything I've been saying. It's one thing to hear what I'm saying, but it's another thing to see it. He says, I will stand upon my watch. I will set myself upon the tower, right? He said, and I will see what the Lord will say to me. 
some of these things I share with you freely I got them from my own mistakes I got them through pain I got them through sacrifice but they are irrefutable laws bring any man for me walk this laws and watch Satan bow watch gates open by themselves I don't care whether it's gates of finances I don't care whether it's gates of health I don't care whether it's gates of ministry gates of business there is nothing you are doing that has not been done before ask those who master this key if he's setting up a company you are not the first to do it if it's marriage you are not the first to do it if it's barrenness you are not the first to be barren the day your light comes that becomes your day of salvation something I have ignored I used to do a lot of things and allow people punish me there was a man of God that set me free just one revelation from him I could go and borrow money and come and help somebody to be careless and run into debt at the expense of the carelessness of someone because I felt I had to be everything to everybody and one day one man of God delivered me his name is Dr. Mike Modok. just one statement he said never do to people what only God can do to them ah that was it that was my deliverance I found out that I was becoming God to many people so I was taking God's responsibility in the lives of so many people and it was killing me and I said no rather than being God let me start leading men to God and it gave me freedom there are some of us who are always paying bills for people who are not serious you give them 20,000 they go and destroy it you give them 100,000 for a business they throw it and you keep doing that is running the finances of your home you are being God to them lead them to God teach them the principles give them access to responsibility rise up on your feet let's pray hallelujah we're just going to have three prayer points I'm going to give us the next five minutes I like you to blast in tongues we're going to pray the secrets of the kingdom like Bishop Oyedeko will say that has been responsible for producing stars in the kingdom life is not guesswork stop guessing koinonia stop guessing you can walk circumspectly by knowledge by knowledge by knowledge lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues pray in the spirit pray pray your ignorance away pray your doubts away Pray your way to the realm of uncommon exploit. Pray your way to the realm of enviable greatness. Pray your way. Pray the secrets of the kingdom. Pray the secrets of the kingdom. Spread the secrets of the kingdom. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. You're my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. Only thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. You're my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. You're my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah.
I like you to pray and say, Father, I'm ready to trade this secret. You have shown me. Teach me how to use them to produce uncommon results. Lift your voice and pray. There is an unction that teaches men. I have taught you, but there is a voice that can teach you. Pray. You are rising. I'm telling you, you are rising. This truth will lift you up. Lord, I'm ready to apply the kingdom. I'm ready to apply the kingdom. We're going to sing one song. Just one song. I'd like you to sing it with all your heart. It's a prophecy. Because in the next one minute, I want to pray for you. There is a grace that activates this. I've taught you the principles. But there is a grace. Arise, shine. My light is come. Personalize it. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me I arise my light is come I feel the glory of the Lord is risen upon me sing it as a prophecy I will arise hey, hey, my light is come in this year of multiplied grace and influence, the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I will arise and shine. Arise. I the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Isaiah 60, please. One, two, three. We are going to sing this song one more time. As you sing it, listen. I want you to see yourself like someone coming out of a pit. See yourself coming out of financial pits. See yourself coming out of all kinds of things. Sing it with understanding. The Bible says sing praises with understanding. Sing it and we'll read this scripture. And I'll pray for you. I arise and shine. My light is come. Oh, hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I will arise and shine. I arise and shine. My light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. One more time. I arise and shine. Arise. Yeah. My light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Arise, he says. Shine for your light. What I've been teaching you has come. All you have been hearing, the mysteries that produce champions in the kingdom has come. It says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2, for behold, it says, the darkness shall cover the earth. Cross darkness the people. It says, but the Lord shall arise upon you. And his glory shall be seen upon you. Verse 3. Hold on. Listen. 
I like you everywhere you see die. Put my. This is a prophecy for you before I speak over your life. Are you ready? Read it convincingly as a prophetic word. One to read. Gentiles shall come to my light and their kings to my rising. One more time. And Gentiles shall come to my light and their kings. Listen. I have seen this thing in the spirit. I have seen men rise. While I was seeking God for this year, God told me it's a year of multiplied grace and influence. It's not just a name. Brothers and sisters, we are about to round up. We are getting towards the end of the first half. There are signals that I'm beginning to receive in my spirit that men are going to change states like day and night. Believe what I'm telling you. That's why I'm teaching you this. The Lord began to put it in my spirit. It's time for people to change. My own assignment is to teach you this and release the grace. God's assignment is to watch over his word and bring it to pass. Lift your hands as I speak over you. Please, I want you to believe. The Bible says, blessed is she that believes. He said, for there shall be a performance. I pray for you. The gates of the next level of your destiny be opened now. The gates of the next level of your destiny be opened now. The gates of the next level of your destiny by prophecy be opened now. I speak to you change levels now change levels now change levels now change levels now I speak to your finances money has a spirit I call you to men now I call you to men now I call forth resources in the name of Jesus hallelujah Lift your hands. I want to end struggle. This life of hardship that many people are going through. I pray for you. The life of struggle and hardship. He said they are taking for a prey and none said restore. I command that life of hardship. Come to an end now. Come to an end now. Kaparataka. Reketekete. Come to an end now. Come to an end now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to believe in the Lord. I want you to believe what I'm saying. I want to release favor on you. I don't know how to make you believe this thing. But brothers and sisters, I can kneel down and beg you. Receive this prayer I'm about to pray for you. There is a grace that favors men in this life. If you walk your way to destiny, you will die young. I knock on the door of favor. And I pray in the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Step into a new dimension of favor. Right now, right now. Step into strange favor. Kabatakarataya, a new dimension of favor, a new level of favor, like a mantle, let it come upon you, like a mantle, let it come upon you, like a mantle, let it come upon you. Hallelujah. Listen, there is a grace for performance at the beginning of this year. The Lord told me, son, there is an anointing I put on your life called grace for performance. The anointing that forces things to work. It doesn't matter whether it has worked for anybody or not. There must be a way around it to work. I pray for you. I don't know what has refused to work in your life. That grace for performance, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. The anointing that calls destiny help us. There is a grace like a magnet that draws them wherever they are. I place an anointing on you. Let it call them now. Help them please. Help them under the anointing. I call, I place that grace like a mantle. It will come upon you now. Hallelujah. I pray for you. Everything that has closed your glory. So that you are not seen. Tonight. In the name of the Lord God of Israel. I declare. May your glory rise for all to see. May your glory rise for all to see. May your glory rise for all to see. Hear me? There are people here. You get results, but you work for everything by yourself. Everything by yourself. I stop that circle in your life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I pray these six keys that have taught your people the key to activating them in their lives that one is not learned it is received as an impartation i pray for you every one of you under the sound of my voice the activation the key be sensitive to what i'm praying i'm not just talking the key that activates these operations i've taught you in the name of jesus I stand by this apostolic and prophetic anointing. I hand it over to you in the spirit. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and begin to thank God and say, I have something. Receive it through thanksgiving. Lord, I expect things to begin to happen in my life. I have the knowledge I receive the empowerment hallelujah hallelujah very quickly our time is up please help them anyone under the anointing just help them I want you to go back I'm glad we are finishing this series in preparation for miracle service please don't miss miracle service one of the things that will happen on Friday is an extensive time of impartation there are people you need to carry some graces in your life hallelujah please make sure that we're going to pray for the sick yes but i i truly want an anointing upon your life that will turn you around and will begin to open up certain doors for you so please don't miss it all those who are worshiping with us for the first time please let's keep standing just for a few minutes we're out of time let's honor them please make your way to the front if this is your first time worshiping with us here in koinonia we love you we honor you god bless you sirs god bless you please appreciate them as they come appreciate them as they come dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye